fish on a small dick knife. Extremely tough day. I put on that copper uh, dick knife, not the smallest one, but it's pretty small. And uh, about 10 minutes, I got a hookup. See if we can get him in. He's jumping like crazy. Man, when the going gets tough, that dick knife is dynamite. Dick Knight, baby. <laughs> He's not a monster, but uh, is not easy today. Oh, fish in the other rod. That one's on a worm. Get this one back in the water. That was on the Dick Knight. Pandemonium breaks out. There we go. Go figure, I hadn't had a strike all morning and that's practically a double hookup. That's more like it. <laughs> that's some action. But see, I uh, I was doing all my power trolling stuff as usual. Extremely tough. I broke out a dick knight and a threaded worm and a blade. And uh, clearly turned my morning around. That's a nice fish for French Meadows, that's for sure. Wowzers! <laughs> so, got that teardrop shaped blade. Control these up to about two miles an hour. One and a half is perfect. And uh, pop this fish off here. So, you know, the usual power trolling stuff is not working. But the more subtle stuff, it's drawing those strikes and uh, looks like I'm going to sell these today here. 
Howdy folks, I'm back from the high Sierras. Um, that's about a two hour drive back to my house. Um, I got all my gear put away. Usually I do these you know, at home segments a day or two after I get done fishing. But uh, today I really had the itch to grab the camera and fire it up. You know, part of what I think makes me a successful fisherman is I spend a lot of time thinking about my previous trips. Um, and that usually starts right away. Sometimes it starts while I'm still on the water. I do a lot of reflecting on what was working, what wasn't working, and uh, make future decisions based on that. I think there's a lot to be learned from today, and I'm super bummed that the wind drove me off the lake. Um, just based on what I saw there right at the end, the last 15 minutes, I felt like either the bite had really turned on, or I really got dialed into what the fish wanted, or both. I think it was more my approach than the temperament of the fish. So let's kind of take the broad view look. Um, I trolled for three plus hours this morning as I set out on the water um, with zero results. But while I was getting zero results, I was marking fish and I actually saw some fish come up to the surface and take stuff off the surface. Not like a full on surface feeding event, just fish that were obviously cruising and looking for targets of opportunity. So let's start off with, we'll talk about the stuff that didn't work. And anybody who tells you they have something that works every day, all day, day in, day out, um, a lot of lure manufacturers, man, they'll tell you that the only thing that'll work is this lure and it's great and it catches them every day. It's not true. Um, every day on the water is different, but with experience, you start to rely on look at that wind. That That's what drove me off the lake. I bet it's just white capping like crazy up at French Meadows now. Anyway, it's day in, day out experience on the water that kind of tells you what works and what doesn't for you. And that's how you start to establish your confidence base. So let's take a look at what I use today. I've got my actual uh, Home Depot compartment box here that holds most of the lures when I'm out on the kayak. This goes under my seat. I have my big backpack, but this is the stuff that I use, you know, on a minute by minute basis. Started off the day using a Arctic Fox, couple different colors, the uh, tube flies. I haven't showed these to you uh, yet on the channel, but I'm about to do a video on these. I started out with these tube flies um, They usually work great and uh, they look much better than that. That one's still wet It looks like it had a had a tough night out at the bar, but uh, it's still wet So it's not looking its best, but I started out with an orange tube fly and a black tube fly Using my lead core rigs. I trolled one at five feet one from 15 to 30 feet deep depending on the marks zero action I decided well that was at about two miles an hour, so I decided, well, I'm gonna bump up my speed. So I grabbed a large, kind of a medium large, Yozuri El Minnow. I tried these in both the uh, silver and blue and the rainbow trout pattern. Um, and I paired those, I, I ran that down deep, hoping for a brown. I was marking some fish down there. I ran that from 15 to 20 feet deep. And up top, top five to 10, I ran a copper speedy shiner, which has been a deadly lure at French Meadows in the past. Again, on those, not a touch. I downsized one size smaller on the Yozuri El Minnow. I trolled this one for about an hour. Zero nothing. Again, I was working those deeper marks that I took to be browns. They had no interest in this. So I wanted to keep up, you know, the fairly fast theme. So I put on a pair of uh, humdingers from Max Lure. I used my red and gold, one of my High Sierra favorites, nothing. Um, down deeper, I ran a pink and chrome UV model, nothing. I've killed them at French Meadows on this lure in the past. They would not take a swipe at it. So I just said, well, I better slow down. So I broke out my tried and true orange and brass. Wow, that hook is sharp. Orange and brass cripple lure, ran that up in the top 10 nothing zero and when I was running that up top I was running a this gold and pink stripe quarter ounce cast master I was running that from 15 to 35 feet deep I was hitting the marks with it and they wanted absolutely no part of it so about that time I'm thinking well I may be getting skunked little little talk about the conditions I had basically a half moon I'm not a full moon I had a little bit of chop for most of the morning surface temperature 59 to 61 degrees 
optimum conditions. Clarity was good. Water was clear of debris largely. I mean, I was up there three weeks ago. There was debris everywhere. Debris was gone. I was marking fish. You know, it's one of those times when you're scratching your head. I'm on the marks. I'm using my stuff. It's not working. I've literally caught thousands and thousands of trout on those lures and you're like, they're just not biting today. I tried you know, three different scents of Procure. Um, I tried it all. Last thing for me to do, break out my slow confidence presentations and here's what I was using. Rod number one, this was the deep rod. This is the lead core outfit with the uh, 60 foot fluorocarbon top shot um, that I use for fishing anywhere from 15 to you know 30 feet deep. Um, I armed this with a Strike Master. This is a Sep Strike Master. These are sold under several different names. I think they come from Silver Horror, I'm not sure. Um, but anyway, the Strike Master. You control this up to about two miles an hour. 1.5 is optimum. And behind that, I was running, gosh, I think I want to say that's an 18 inch leader. And uh, you know, I didn't have a special length on the leader. It was one I grabbed out of my box and I did not have one of those slow death hooks rigged up on a leader. I didn't want to take time to rig it. So I was using this river style hook and that's a number four. Um, so that's about 18 inches behind that. It's just a chrome on chrome blade. This thing has a really good kick. And when I put it on the water, once I got a half a worm on there, I really like the action get a really good pulse on the worm despite that little bit of a longer leader it just looked like money um, my expectations were low because you know I'd had you know so many fish reject me throughout the morning but I put this down I put out what I put out I put out two colors of lead core so I was back maybe I don't know 70 ish feet and I figured my depth with that blade would be maybe 12 to 15 feet deep because that blade is heavy you know it's gonna it's gonna run down a little bit I tried to stay at 1.5 so I got that down there it was working I was getting a nice a nice you know I could see that blade working on the rod tip so it's feeling good about that presentation my other rod this is more my uh, my surface lead core rig. This is the one that has the 60 foot top shot. So I control it with one or two colors, still be well behind the kayak. Um, by the time I got this out, I'm getting a little more vigorous, you know, chop on the surface. But like I say, I'd had chop all morning, but, uh, and I'd seen some fish right underneath the chop, come up right in that chop. You know, that's one of the things about fishing out of the kayak. Fish will come right up to the kayak. And I saw fish come up and just kind of take targets, what I took to be targets of opportunity. It, they could have been, you know, anything. Could have been bees, whatever. Something floating on the surface. They saw it. They took a liking to it and they grabbed it. Um, so with that in mind, I knew I wanted to troll about four to five feet deep. So this rod, the holder I had it in, it's, you know, it's, it's scoped up pretty good. So I put out one color of lead core, eight pound test leader. And this, this isn't the smallest dick knight. It's the next size up. I'm not sure what number that is but it's not the smallest it's the next one up and i just put copper on copper um that's a color i've had success with in the past at a number of different lakes it's got some flash but it's not as flashy as chrome but it's got a little bit of flash i, I like copper colors especially when the bite's tough so get those in the water and uh, you know you'll see the results on the video the dick knight got hit first um Nothing crazy, just a pan-sized rainbow, but I was glad to see him. That took the skunk off the boat, so I got him in a net. I was in the process of unhooking him, and that uh, that worm rig just got slammed. Uh, essentially, it was a double hookup, um, so I, I tossed the little rainbow. I got on the pedals a little bit, make sure the hook was set on that. I started fighting the fish, and I, I thought I had him foul hooked a little bit, but it, he actually wasn't fouled. Um, he was just a husky fish for, for French meadows. I mean, Lake Elmanor, he, was, he wasn't anything special. But at a lake, you know, French meadows, where the biggest rainbow I've ever caught up there is about 18 inches. He was a handsome fish. He fought well. He was hooked right through the lower jaw. Um, and that river hook, it, it, did a, it did a great job, a fantastic job on him. And uh, anyway, I got him in, got him released. Um, he was acting a little 
a little sheepish on the surface, which you'll see a lot of times. Um, but I came back around, I immediately poked him with the rod. I knew he was fine. As soon as he, I touched him on the flank with that rod, he was gone. So he's out there swimming around somewhere, waiting, waiting to see me the next time I go up. So repositioned the worm, worm was still fine. Got this back down, immediately got hit again. Um, turned the kayak to go with the wind. Um, as I was turning, I had a fish chewing on the worm. He ended up messing the worm up, but he didn't get it in his mouth. He didn't get hooked. Um, and then, you know, I'm getting more and more white cap, and, and I'm just I'm just basically floating down the lake. I'm just steering the kayak, and I'm going 1.8 in the wind. And at that point, I kind of got off the spot, and I think that is an interesting point as well. I like to troll structure, especially when the water's fairly cool. I like to get on structure. I like to get on contours. I like to work stump flats, you know, anything that provides structure and feed. If that area fails me, my next area to work, and I'm talking any lake, is the area right over the main channel. Don't know why, you can be in Shasta, it can be 300 feet deep, fish gravitate to that main channel. And the same is true at French Meadows, same is true at any high mountain lake. I got out over that main channel, and that's where I was making my first pass with this gear when I hooked up. Um, when that wind got popping though, I moved in closer to the launch ramp and I was over some attractive structure but I wasn't marking fish in that area I wasn't feeling it that was more of an area just to just to spend a little bit of time to see if the wind was going to relent any and it didn't it intensified um, and it, it worked out good because I was right by the ramp got the boat on the land got the uh, trailer and I actually got to meet a couple fish sniffer readers they were they were cool fellas um, they fish French meadows every single year so they were having a good time um, they hadn't caught anything this morning they reported the same thing as me tough bite this morning uh, Rapal is the whole thing everything kind of failed to work and then they were in a tin boat when that wind got popping they were experienced Sierra guys they were like we are out of here so we went in at the same time but anyway the big point to take away from this, and I know I'm rambling a little bit, I rambled in the kayak. Um, you gotta have confidence base. Start out, and I, I sound like a broken record, start out aggressive, work those aggressive patterns. When that isn't working, you need your absolute, my back is up against the wall, I need my fallback pattern. And uh, you know, there's a number of things that will fill that bill. For some guys, it's the old curly tail grub. For some guys, it's a, it's a woolly booger fly. Um, for other guys, it, it may be the cast master. It may be any number of things. You gotta answer that question for yourself. But when my back is against the wall and I need to slow down and I, I really need to show those fish something that I feel they have a, a high probability of hitting, uh, number one, threaded worm with or without a blade. Um, today, I had some surface chop. I didn't think the blade was gonna hurt me and I knew with that Strike Master, I could troll it nice and slow. So, number one, worm, give them the real meat. I slathered that worm with Anise Krill Procure because that's my hands down favorite trout scent and I was really going for success. I mean, I was trying to check all the boxes of my confidence baits. Um, on the other rod, no brainer, the Dick Knight. If you wanna troll a small spoon, you wanna go slow, you want to show the fish something that's not going to spook them, that's probably going to get, you know, pique their interest a little bit, go with that. I also put the anise krill on that. I put a little dollop right by where the hook connects on the back. And I'm not one of those guys that thinks you need to put a gallon of Procure on your stuff. Fish are very sensitive. They're very dialed into their environment. So a little dab. And I've seen fish on, ca on a camera come up to troll baits and they'll get, they'll get right behind that bait. So just a little whiff of scent is often all it takes to close the deal. Anyway, those are my observations on the day. Uh, final word, remember, everybody can catch them when the bite is wide open. It's a good fisherman that can turn, you know, lemons into lemonade and catch fish when the bite is off. The bite was definitely off today and uh, I got several strikes out of the deal. I got a nice rainbow. I got two fish. Skunk was off the kayak. I'm home and uh, I'm going to write that one up as a successful outing once again. Uh, Lucy the fishing dog and I, we, uh, we had a good time today. So anyway, those are my observations on the day. I'll be reflecting on this some more, I'm sure. Uh, but anyway, 
I'm signing off for now. This is Kel Kellogg. If you haven't hit the subscribe button, please do. And I'll catch you next time right here on YouTube. Thanks for the support, guys.